Hi. So, I've got to come clean. I've been lying to oh you. Oh my God. What? Oh my God, what could he mean? A liar. I knew Instagram it. Cheater. I believe everything I see on the internet. Hey, uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, even even you in the in the back there. So today, I just wanted to talk about this drone shot. And um, this is the lie in question. Boom, baby. Sorry. It was shot in reverse. And that's the lie, but you know what? It looks exactly like I wanted it to, and the client absolutely loved it. The thing was, navigating trees like that, uh, it was kind of windy, and I was kind of nervous. So I'm like, I know I can go straight up, but coming back down into them, ugh, not that good of a drone pilot, so I just went up, and it all worked out. Now, the thing with photo and video is that we are all telling lies all the time. Uh, when I bring this up, I'm sure everyone's minds go to Instagram filters, Photoshop, um, only taking and sharing photos of the most rad moments of our lives so that people think that we're way more interesting than we are, but in reality, most days are spent with a light forest walk followed by eight hours of editing with bad posture. Hey, uh, as a quick side note, can we just collectively agree to stop using the term Photoshop to refer to like any kind of edit? Like someone will throw a random filter from a random app and people will just be like, <laughs> it was Photoshop, but like it's not. It's just, it's different. Okay, now lies in photography can be simple or very complex. Simple lies can be something like adjusting lighting or removing a particularly suspicious stick in the background of a picture or just a light retouch on a subject's face. And we see larger lies all the time too in movies with like CGI and composite images. There's a lot going on. The truth is that we are often manipulating a scene in some way to add our own brand of creativity to it. Now, why is this all important, you're asking? Um, it's not. Bye. Lies, manipulation, organization, control, expression, creativity, whatever you want to call it, these changes to like normal perception are what make photos and videos interesting. They're kind of the things that set them apart from other videos to me at least. Maybe these things aren't all lies, I'm just being a silly little hyperbolic boy, but these adjustments to reality that come through in editing or composition are the things that engage us with art and force us to think a little differently. So there are a lot of photographers and videographers whose work I absolutely adore, and um, <laughs> I would consider myself amongst them. <laughs> Uh, just kidding, I actually fall into the artist's bucket of like constantly feeling like my work doesn't compare to others and that it's never good enough, but we're working through it. So a recent example for me uh, is a fellow named Kevin Perry. Parry? Perry. And I'm sure many of you have heard of him. His videos all involve some sort of manipulation, um, like forced perspective, timing, editing, and a lot of thought goes into his videos. Dang. I'll just sit there being fascinated, uh, bringing back like a childlike sense of wonder as to how he made these videos. Like, come on, how do you get that so clean? And whenever I see something new or that I'm unsure of how it was done, it makes me super stoked. Uh, I always think about like the different ways I could achieve this effect, different ways to go about it, different ways to try it for myself. Some people for me who have kind of brought a similar um, excitement are like Daniel Schiffer, James Popsis, Casey Neistat, those types of things, and for very different reasons between the three. Um, it makes me want to create, and it gets my artistic juices flowing, and it just kind of makes me want to be a better artist in a sense. Now here's another perhaps more uh, grounded example. Um, here are a couple photos from a photo duo named Mike and Sherry. Uh, they're local photographers to me, um, but they do unbelievable work all over the place and they just absolutely wow me with their work. The way that these specific images are composed may not fall under a classical composition, you know, rule of thirds, golden ratio, whatever, but that's just what makes them interesting. Like this photo here. Um, some people may say that person's in the way. Uh, get out of the way, please. To me, and 
I'm sure the intent was, it perfectly frames the couple and it makes it feel less like a staged moment, more like a once in a lifetime shot kind of caught in a sea of energy. And um, you know, maybe it was a lucky shot, but um, either way, at some point, the photographers had to consider this being a keeper or not. And um, ultimately, like the non-traditional framing of this shot and others just really gets me thinking and it really kind of helps to push me forward. I think sometimes we get lost in kind of a sea of scrolling, social media, and um, that's not the most fun ocean to be in. Um, I find myself, as I mentioned earlier, oftentimes comparing my work to others, but you never see people comparing their work to yours and uh, fitting in with like the social media culture or even just finding business in your local area can sometimes feel exhausting. Um, it also feels kind of bland maybe sometimes. Um, that's why I think when creators do something that is unique or different or just reframes a similar concept in a different way excites me. And it makes me want to push my own boundaries, try new framing, poses, compositions, editing, all that good stuff. So anyways, I hope this gave you something to think about and uh, hope it was more encouraging and not depressing because we're having fun here. It's fun. Bye.